Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Greetings ladies and gentlemen and welcome to today's video. In this discussion inshallah we are going to be talking about the subject of polygamy as it pertains to verse number 3 of chapter 4 that is surah an-nisa. Typically when people discuss the issue of polygamy they bring up this verse to justify that the Quran has in fact mandated polygamy for men. However, I think that this verse deals with a different kind of issue and not polygamy in the sense. Now, of course, I am not saying that polygamy is wrong or that the Quran doesn't acknowledge it. It does in fact acknowledge it in my opinion and it does allow it. It does not seem to speak ill about it. However, it does portray monogamy to be the more ideal Typically, when we listen to people who talk about this issue, they like to say that within Islam, you are allowed to marry up to four women. And so they bring up this verse in order to justify that or in order to lend credence to that uh, statement. But I don't think that this verse is actually mandating that a number of how many women you are allowed to marry. I don't even think it is dealing with all women in general because there is a clause in the verse. So there is a condition that has been placed upon the one who seeks to marry other women. And also the verse seems to be dealing with a particular kind of women. Of course, if one wants to marry uh, other women, as I said, they can if they can in fact uh, take care of those women. However, they will be held responsible if they decide to marry multiple women and then it shows that they cannot take care of those women. They will be held responsible in the eyes of Allah. So err on the side of caution, I would say, to multiple people or to anyone who wants to take on a second wife. You want to make sure that, of course, the other wife is okay with that issue so that it doesn't cause dissension between the wives. But anyway, that's a little bit of an introduction to uh, today's topic. But you know my view as it pertains to polygamy. So let's just get into the verse in question. Now, as I said, the verse is found in Surah An-Nisa. That is verse number three. So the verse reads as follows. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim. Wa in khiftum alla tuqsitu fil yatama fankihu ma taba lakum min al-nisai mathna wa thulatha wa ruba'a. Fa in khiftum alla ta'adilu fa wahidatan aw ma malakat aymanukum thalika adena alla ta'ulu. So the verse uh, says in English, and if you should fear that you would not be able to deal fairly with regards to the fatherless, then marry what seems suitable to you of the widowed women in twos and threes and fours. But if you happen to fear that you will not deal justly, then at least one or what your oaths have taken into possession. That would be nearer so that you do not overreach. You would notice that in other translations, for example, it would not acknowledge that this is talking about widowed women, but rather that it's talking about women in general. And also another thing that you notice is that the word fatherless, uh, yatama, which I have rendered as fatherless, is rendered in those translations as orphans, which is also fine. However, we need to understand what is meant by the term yatama within the Quran. When the Quran uses the term yatama, it doesn't mean it in, in the sense that someone has lost both their parents. Rather, what that means is that someone has lost the person who is the provider and typically that was the father. So when that uh, breadwinner dies, then the children, and they have to be children here, and the children become yatama. So the mother doesn't necessarily have to die. If you want to render it as orphans, then at least explain what that entails. So the verse begins, wa in khiftum, and if you should fear. So the you here is in pertaining to, of course, the uh, either the men or the people within the community themselves. Allah tuqsitu fin yatama. That you would not be able to be fair or you would not be able to maintain fairness as it pertains to filiatama, as it pertains to the yatama, to the fatherless. Fankihu ma taba lakum min nisa Then marry what seems taba to you, what seems suitable, what seems appropriate, what seems good to you, min nisa of the women. So as you notice here, I have rendered that as of the widowed women, and I have not rendered it as merely of the women. So the father dies, 
and then the children are left with the mother. And these are the kinds of women that are being discussed within this verse. Within society, if you should fear that you would not be able to deal fairly as it pertains to the orphans, then marry of the women. People would think that this verse is saying that you can marry the orphan girls. No, that's absolutely stupid. The verse is actually dealing with a situation within society in which a man dies and or the provider, the breadwinner dies and leaves behind children. And those children are of course in the custody of their mother. So if you should fear that this would not be the case, that they would not be well off, then you can marry what seems appropriate or suitable of the women. So of these widowed women. Mathna wa thulatha wa ruba'a. So that is rendered typically as twos or threes or fours, right? Or two or three or four. But actually the verse doesn't say if name, right? It doesn't say two. It doesn't even say or, or, or. No, it says in twos, threes, fours. So it's giving it in plural, right? It's saying two, a group of twos, a group of threes, a group of fours. So you can assess it better in that way when you group them like that. A group of twos and a group of threes and a group of fours. فَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا And if you should fear that you would not be able to deal justly. فَوَاحِدَةً أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ Then at least one أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ Or what your oaths have taken into possession. ذَلِكَ أَدْنَا أَلَّا تَعْلُوا Then Allah says that would be nearer so that you do not overreach. The Quran here is saying that Look, there is this situation that has presented itself. These women need someone to take care of them. Their husbands have died and they have no one to provide for their children. So you men have to step up. You have to step up and marry these women. Make sure to take care of them. The point is to take care of those ones who are less fortunate, those ones who are low, to make sure that there is no this imbalance within society. It's to, it, it, that's what it's trying to do. It's trying to create an equilibrium within society. Now, if it happens that a man, for example, fears that they would not be able to deal justly with all the women, then they can only, they can marry at least one of these women, including the children. It, it is a financial burden, of course. If you can't at least do that, if you also can't take on that one woman, then you, there are others who need help. The milked you mean, right? They too need assistance within society. So you can marry at least from them. Again, the point is to create an equilibrium where everybody is well off, where everybody is being taken care of. Because within society, you have those people who are, who have less, who are not as fortunate as others. And among those who are less fortunate, besides the, the fatherless, there were also the milkel yameen, right? They also needed assistance. They also needed help. So the Quran would say that, okay, well, if you feel that you cannot at least marry these ones, right? If you feel that's a, a huge financial burden, then just marry from the milk al -yamin. Let's look at the first six verses of this, uh, of this chapter and try to see what is actually being talked about. The, the chapter begins by Ya ayyuhan nasu taqu rabbakum alladhi khalqakum min nafsin wahida wa khalq minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathira wa nisaa wa taqu allaha alladhi tasa'aluna bihi wal arham inna allaha kana alaykum raqiba That is, O oh people, be mindful of your Lord, the one who created you from a single soul and from it he created its mate. And from them both he has scattered many men and women. Be mindful of God by whom you ask one another, as well as the wombs. Assuredly, God is ever a watcher over you. Here Allah begins by, Ya Ayyuhannas, all people, all of you people, Ittaqo Rabbakum, be mindful of your Lord, be mindful of Allah, be conscientious about God, be aware of God, or keep in mind, keep God in mind. You know, when you are in your dealings, when you are dealing with other people, particularly the one who created you, the one who created you from a single soul. So he created every single human being from a single soul. What that soul is, we are not told. And created from it, its mate. Okay, so from that soul, God created its mate. And from them both, from both those souls, 
from that soul as well as its mate, God spread men and women. Allah and be mindful of God by whom you ask for one another. What does that mean? That means that when we typically speak to one another, we use God as the assurance to get what we want. So basically you are asking for a favor from another individual by using God as the anchor, as the representative, right? Wal arham. Then Allah tells us that also keep in mind the arham. Now why is that relevant? It is relevant particularly that Allah is trying to stress the situation of the human being, that the human being shares a womb. So that's why we need to all you know, be mindful to keep that in mind. It's not just talking about familiar relationships, but it's also talking about humanity as a whole, right? That we all have that sense of brotherhood, of commonality, of or common origin. Inna Allah kana alaykum raqiba. Allah is assuredly ever watchful over you, right? Allah is always watching over us. So why does God begin by by saying that he created us from a single soul when the following verse is going to be talking about the yatama? It's because God first wants to let us know that we all come from the same source, the same, we have a common ancestor and we are all brethren connected to one another. So therefore, God needs to say that first, to introduce that first so that we get that idea. Then comes the yatama, right? Those ones who have lost their uh, the fathers, that they too are not different from you. They too come from the same common source, just as you. So give them, the, give the yatama their wealth. So if I married, for example, a widowed woman and she has children and I take, I take the uh, possession, I take into possession the assets that the father had left behind, right? And I hold on to them until the yatama have grown of age, have come of age. Once they have come of age, then I am, I'm supposed to give them their wealth. So that's why Allah says, وَآتُوا الْيَتَامَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ Right? Give the yatama their uh, property. وَلَا تَبَدَّلُ الْخَبِيثَ بِالطَّيِّبِ And do not exchange the defective with the good. So basically it means that the, if there was something that has been left with for them that is good, you are not allowed to exchange that for something that is less. You are not allowed to exchange with something that is bad. وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا أَمْوَالَهُمْ إِلَىٰ أَمْوَالِكُمْ Then it says, and do not consume their wealth into your own wealth. So you are not allowed to consume to take the wealth or the assets of the yatama into your own assets. That when you take on this responsibility as a, as a new husband that has come in and you have married this woman, once you have done that and you have taken on these children under your wing, their property is for them. What their father left to them is for them. It does not belong to you. And you are not allowed to incorporate that as an asset that belongs to you as well. It belongs to them and it is theirs. You are only holding on to that property for them. So, إِنَّهُ كَانَ حُوبًا كَبِيرًا Then Allah tells us, as that surely happens to be an enormous, it's an enormous offense. Then comes the verse, وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَلَّا تُقْسِطُوا فِي الْيَتَامَ And if you should, or if you happen to fear, remember, there's connection again, أَلَّا تُقْسِطُوا فِي الْيَتَامَ That you would not be able to, to deal fairly. You know, with regards to the orphans. Then marry what seems suitable to you of the widowed women. So again, we've already explained what this actually means. You know, you have a situation in which there are widowed women, then you can marry uh, those widowed women. And if you happen to fear that you will not deal justly, then at least one, right? Then at least one widow along with her children or what your oaths have taken into possession that is that if you cannot marry multiple women or multiple of these women these widowed women then uh, along with their children then at least marry just one along with her children and if that's too much then at least marry a uh, malka because they too need assistance from you. That would be nearer so that you do not overreach. Allah tells us, ذَلِكَ أَدَنَا أَلَّا تَعْلُمُ Now it doesn't say that is going to fix the situation or that is going to fix the problem within society. No. ذَلِكَ أَدَنَا That is near. It's more appropriate. It's closer. Then it says, وَآتُ النِّسَاءَ صَدُقَاتِهِنَّ And give to the widowed women their rightful amounts as a freely given gift. نِحْلَةً Now what does that statement mean? It means that if you decide to marry these widowed women, right? Typically when people, 
intend might intend to marry these widowed women because they think that the widowed women are less than they or that they that they're doing them a favor they might say well i don't need to give you you know any any mahar i don't need to give you any bridal compensation but allah says wa atu nisa give these women give the widowed women their sadaqatihin right their sadaqat and allah calls it sadaqat he doesn't call it like like ujur right their bridal compensation their compensations like in other places of the quran but here he calls it sadaqat right which is a very interesting term and of course the term comes from sidq it comes from from being truthful or being rightfully something that is rightfully yours meaning that the amount the compensation that is given to the women is theirs is their right nihla and you have to give it nihlatan give it as a freely given gift it's given freely and and you don't hold any grudges over it meaning just like a nahl for example the bee a bee is called a nahl it gives uh, honey freely right uh, it doesn't hold any grudges over it so you too when you do give this this composition or this amount onto to the women you must also give it freely don't expect to get it back don't expect to that they owe you once you have actually given them that fa in tibna lakum an shay'in minhu minhu nafsan then allah tells us but if they of their own accord nafsan if they of their own accord give up anything tibna lakum if they give up anything to you from it minhu shay'an if they give up anything so you give them their rightful dues if they say you know what that's a bit too much uh, just give me half or, you know uh, you can keep the other half and then in that case allah says that's fine they may do that they may do that but the right belongs to them fakuluhu hani'a maria then eat of it hani'an uh, freely with ease maria'an right you are supposed to eat it freely with ease and satisfaction wala tu'tu sufaha'a amwalakum allati ja'ala Allah lakum qiyaman warzuquhum fiha waksuhum wa qulu lahum qawlan ma'rufa and do not give or do not hand over to the weak minded uh, your wealth which God has made you an overseer now what does that mean so if you are in this situation and there are some children there you are not allowed to give them their assets right because they are still young they don't know about responsibility particularly to be financially responsible so you are not allowed to give them to hand over the wealth to them while they are still young and they don't understand anything but you are supposed to just keep it to yourself right you are supposed to keep it and be an overseer over it and allah says ja'ala allah lakum qiyama allah has made you an overseer warzuquhum fiha waksuhum Uh, but do provide from do provide for them from it waksuhum and also clothe them so let's say for example you you there's this orphan who lives with you you're allowed to talk from take from those assets and provide for them make sure that they are well off waqulu lahum qawlan ma'rufa and speak to them a word that is ma'ruf that is in good conscience why is that important well because in this situation if for example someone a, a stubborn child who wants their wealth right they want give me my father's inheritance right they don't have any financial responsibilities you are not allowed to hand it over to them you provide for them and you clothe them from that from those assets also you must remember to speak to them qawla ma'rufa words that are in good conscience a speech that is in good conscience when you're speaking to them make sure that you speak to them with understanding in a way that is appropriate in a way that is in good conscience in a way that is good in a way that is right you know don't be shouting at them don't don't be rude to them rather you have, you must speak to them calmly and with understanding it doesn't give you license to be mean to them wa bitalul yatama what 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 then should you do it says wa bitalul yatama hatta idha balagh nikah that test the fatherless so these orphans until they reach marriage why is be, it is because once they do get married they have they, they're taking on responsibility test them throughout their life to see whether they are uh, mentally capable whether they are uh, financially responsible until they reach marriage meaning until they reach adulthood then it says fa in anastu minhum rushdan and if you do notice rushd right thinking good judgment if you notice sound judgment fadfa'u ilayhim amwalahum then relinquish to them 
their wealth, give them their money, give them their property. It's telling us again two things. It's telling us also that what marriage requires, it requires rushed. It requires right understanding and right uh, uh, judgment. Remember, in order to get married, you need money. Okay, yeah, this is everywhere, whether it is now or it was before. You are going to need money in order to take care of your family. So the Quran tells us here that you can only give them money if they have rushed. Okay, rushdan, It's a double-edged sword. When you refuse to give them their wealth because they are not financially responsible, then that means they won't be able to get married. Because marriage must come with it responsibility. It must come with it the ability to think rightly. Only the sound, the person with sound judgment and rightful thinking and responsible could get married. So Allah tells us, that you are supposed to test the orphans or the fatherless, the yatama, throughout their life. Until when they have reached nikah. They have reached that point, that age in their life where they are capable of getting married. فَإِنْ أَنَسْتُ مِنْهُمْ رُشْدًا And if you do notice rushd in them, you notice that they have good understanding, they have right judgment. فَدِفَعُوا إِلَيْهِمْ أَمْوَالَهُمْ Then relinquish to them their wealth. وَلَا تَأْكُلُوهَا إِسْرَافًا وَبِدَارًا أَنْ يَكْبَرُوا And do not consume it excessively. إِسْرَافًا excessively. وَبِدَارًا أَنْ in haste. أن يكبروا in fear that they would grow up. Don't consume their wealth throughout their life because you are afraid that they are going to grow up and then they are going to ask you of it or they are going to demand it of you. ومن كان غنيا فليستعفف As for the one who happens to be what? Uh, rich فليستعفف The one who is well off, let them abstain. So don't touch their wealth. Don't touch their money. ومن كان فقيرا فليأكل بالمعروف And whoever happens to be فقير, poor, let him consume according to what is appropriate. It's talking about a situation in which you get married with these women down the line because now you've taken on this responsibility. You've taken on these, uh, this woman or these women along with their children. Obviously, your financials are going to be depleted in a certain way. If you're still well off during that situation, فليستعفف, then stay away. Don't touch their wealth. وَمَنْ كَانَ فَقِيرًا But if it happens that your wealth becomes depleted over time because you've taken on all of these people under your, uh, you know, under your household and now your finances are getting depleted because of that, you may consume فَلْيَأْكُلْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ But it has to be appropriately. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَأْكُلُونَ أَمْوَالَ الْيَتَامَ ظُلْمًا إِنَّمَا يَأْكُلُونَ فِي بُطُونِهِمْ نَارًا Right? Those people who consume the wealth of the fatherless unjustly, they consume it wrongfully. إِنَّمَا يَأْكُلُونَ فِي بُطُونِهِمْ نَارًا They only consume a fire within their bellies. So keep that in mind. Then he says, فَإِذَا دَفَعْتُمْ إِلَيْهِمْ أَمْوَالَهُمْ And when you do give them their wealth, when it comes the moment where they are now adults, they are getting, they are about to get married maybe, and they require their wealth. You've noticed Rushd in them, they are capable, they are financially ready, they are stable, they, are, uh, they have the right mind and the right capacity, and you are going to give them their wealth, you are going to relinquish to them their wealth or their property. فَشْهِدُوا عَلَيْهِمْ Make sure that you uh, call for call to witness over them. You have to call witnesses to be there and witness the proceedings that you have in fact paid over what is owed them. Then Allah ends it by saying, وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ حَسِيبًا and, But God is sufficient as accountant. So even though God is sufficient as an accountant, you still have to do this. So that is basically what the verses are talking about from verse number 1 to verse number 6. The, the point of the verses is not to push some idea of polygamy. The verse is dealing with a completely different situation and it has nothing to do with fulfilling one's desire. It's all about taking care of these women, of these children. And it's mostly the children. It's not too much. It's not the women that are the focal point of these verses. It is the orphans that are the focal point of these verses. Uh, before I, I end this uh, this video, I would like to end it with a verse number nine, which 
cautions you know people who deal with this kind of stuff it says wal yakhsha alladhina law taraku min khalfihim dhurriyatan dha'afan khafu alayhim falyataqullaha wal yaqulu qawlan sadida this is one of the most amazing verses in the entire quran in my opinion because it speaks to the human emotion and the human understanding and the human situation and it wants you to connect with your inner human it says and let those who are in charge of the proceedings so this is talking about the person who is going to be dealing up the wealth let them be concerned law taraku min khalfihim dhurriyatan dha'afan khafu alayhim let them be concerned as if it were themselves who had left behind after them weak offspring for whose well-being they feared so allah is saying that put yourself in a similar situation where you had died and you had left behind children that are weak what would you do how would you like people to treat you how would you like people to handle to treat your own children after you had passed away see trying to appeal to the human being to see reason to actually understand that you could be put in the same situation just as these orphans so for that reason you have to be concerned about them it's also removing this kind of stigma that people perpetrate around that when 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 your spouse dies you don't want anybody to marry them after that what kind of nonsense is that of course you would want them to be looked after so allah says let them be concerned as if it were themselves who had died and they had left behind weak offspring for whose well-being they feared then he say wal yattaqullah and keep god in mind be mindful of god wal yaqulu qawlan sadida and let them speak a word that is firm and to the point that is what i have for today i hope that you all enjoyed the video remember to subscribe to the channel and also give this video a like i will see you in the next video assalamu alaikum